Hello, and welcome back to Plankton in Our Oceans. This unit is broken up into four sections. This second section will focus on collecting plankton. In this video, we are going to cover how do scientists collect plankton, why do we collect plankton, and how to make a plankton tow. Let's get started. How do scientists collect plankton? There are a number of ways that scientists collect plankton. The method that they choose to use depends largely on the information that they are trying to get, the budget that they are on, and how precise their data needs to be. When collecting plankton, it is important to remember that plankton distribution is not even throughout the oceans. It varies vertically and horizontally throughout the water, and even by the time of day. For example, phytoplankton move upward in the water column towards the sunlight in the mornings, which is why it is best to sample them between 8.30 and 10. To minimize confounding variables, scientists are careful to sample plankton at the same time of day and location. Some of the most common methods for sampling plankton include surface water sampling, sampling at specific depths, integrated water column sampling, and plankton nets. There are advantages and disadvantages to each method. Surface sampling is done by throwing a clean bucket or bottle off of the side of a boat, allowing it to fill around halfway, and then bringing it back on board. The water is then transferred into sampling bottles. To sample from shore, a sampling jar can be attached to the end of a pole. This method is good for collecting all sizes of plankton since it is collecting the water. It is also one of the easiest and cheapest methods. Disadvantages to surface sampling include only being able to sample the top 0.1 to 0.5 meters of water, which may not be a very good representation of the plankton throughout that entire area. Additionally, this method requires the concentration or settling of the plankton before you can get good counts of them. Sampling at specific depths as the name implies, entails taking water samples from various known depths. Scientists usually employ Kemmerer, Van Dorn, Niskin, or Nansen water samplers. The samplers, which are basically just hollow tubes with open lids on either end, are lowered to the desired depth, triggered to close on either side, and then brought back to the surface. Advantages to this method include obtaining even the smallest plankton, getting quantitative data, and being able to sample to deep depths, limited mainly by the length of line available. Disadvantages include needing many samples in order to get a good representation from throughout the water column, or missing plankton between sampling depths. While lowering the devices, it is advantageous to disrupt the water as little as possible because some plankton may move away from the area and bias the results. Furthermore, it is once again important to concentrate or settle the plankton so that they can be more easily counted. Alternatively, people use weighted bottles to sample at specific depths. A weighted glass bottle is fitted with a cork that is attached to a line that extends to the surface. The bottle is lowered to the desired depth and the cork is then yanked out so that the bottle fills with the water from that given depth. The bottle is then pulled back to the surface. This method has the same advantages and disadvantages to the water samplers, but may be less precise because the closed bottom disrupts the water as it is lowered, and due to water pressure, can usually only be used up to 20 meters. Integrated water column sampling is another common sampling method. Equipment used include Kolewasa samplers, hose pipe samplers, and plankton pumps. Kolewasa samplers and hose pipe samplers are like long tubes that scientists lower into the water. They trap a vertical profile of the water in a given location. The water collected can be mixed and then placed into sampling bottles as a representation of the plankton throughout that entire area. You need fewer samples with this method and it is still quantitative because you are looking at the plankton from a known volume of water. A disadvantage to this method is that it can usually measure only up to around 10 meters in depth. You also do not get the same information about the plankton distribution throughout the depth gradients. Samples, once again, need to be settled in order to get a good count. The plankton pump is the more expensive method that falls under integrated water column sampling. A pump is lowered to a desired depth 
and it brings up water that is then immediately filtered to avoid needing to concentrate the samples. A scale on the pump measures the volume of water being filtered, so once again, it is quantitative. Due to the pump pressure, plankton may be damaged though. The final sampling method that we will explore is a plankton net. The general idea behind this method is that plankton will be caught in a net as it is dragged through the water. There are many types of nets that can be used, and a plankton net can easily be created, something that we will do next. The advantage to the plankton net is that it already concentrates the plankton and is easy to use. On the flip side, most nets are not fine enough to catch all of the plankton, since many plankton are teeny tiny. Some organisms may also be damaged when they come in contact with the net. Generally, plankton toes are seen as qualitative measures of plankton because it is very difficult to estimate the volume of water that is being filtered and because of the inability of most toes to collect all of the plankton since the net is not fine enough. Assuming there are no clogs in the net though, the volume of water filtered can be estimated by the equation volume equals pi r squared times l, where l is the distance the net was towed in meters. Therefore, you may be able to make some quantitative assumptions, but the measures would likely not be very precise or accurate. Before we go over the steps to make your own plankton tow, let's talk about why scientists would want to collect plankton. Why do we collect plankton? To understand why collecting plankton is important, let's explore the type of information that you can gather from collecting plankton. All plankton sampling is helping us gather water quality data, since the number of plankton has a big effect on water quality. Each method offers specific information as well. Sampling surface waters allows us to examine the types of plankton in a given area and the number of plankton near the surface. Water sampling at various depths can give you a better idea about plankton distribution throughout the water column. Such measurements have allowed scientists to understand more about the light requirements, how plankton are distributed vertically in the water column, and seasonal changes. Integrated water column sampling can provide insight into the average amount of plankton within a certain area of water. Plankton toes allow you to identify some of the larger plankton and make qualitative observations. We established that plankton are the foundation of the food web. Therefore, the information that plankton collections offer help us understand patterns of biological activity. For example, the diet of humpback whales consists mainly of zooplankton, which eats phytoplankton. Therefore, looking at phytoplankton abundance helps explain whales' migratory patterns. Noticing changes in plankton distribution can also indicate changes in the environment. Land-based nutrients, for example, can cause higher abundances of phytoplankton and even lead to harmful algal blooms. Therefore, plankton may help us find places where sewage or agricultural runoff may be entering our waterways. As the climate changes, it is also important for us to track changes in plankton, something that you will explore further in the fourth section of this unit. Now that you understand more about how plankton are collected and why, let's make our own plankton tow. How to make a plankton tow. First, let's gather all of our materials. You are going to need a 2 liter soda bottle with the cap on it, one nylon knee-high stocking. If you're like me and you could only find tights, feel free to simply cut the tights into two pieces. You'll need around 9 feet of nylon or heavy-duty string. You will need duct tape, a pair of scissors, a hole punch, preferably a single hole punch, but even the two or three hole punch will work, and a small collection jar. A mason jar works well, or baby food jars, anything that is sealable, that can contain water, and that is clean. Next, we are going to take off the cap from the soda bottle. Set it aside in a safe place, as you will need it later. Draw a line about three inches from the neck of the bottle, and then draw a second line around four inches below the first. Cut along the two lines. Pinch the bottle and then make a small cut with the scissors and then begin cutting the rest. Making the first incision may be difficult, so ask your teacher if you need any help. The bottom of the bottle can be recycled. Once you have finished cutting, you can replace the cap onto the upper section of your cut bottle. 
Now grab your nylon stocking and cut a small hole at the toe. Take the top portion of the bottle and slide it through the small hole that you made at the toe of the stocking. Once you have fitted the top of the bottle into the stocking, use the duct tape to tape it in place. Next, take the middle portion of the soda bottle and tape it to the other end of the nylon stocking. Once you have secured it with duct tape, take your hole punch and make three evenly spaced holes along the circumference of the untaped middle section of the bottle. Cut the nine foot nylon string or heavy duty string into three pieces, each about three feet long. Tie one piece of string to each of the three holes. Then tie the three strings together at the top. That is your plankton toe line. Now prepare your sampling bottle by finding a clean, resealable jar or bottle. Either write directly onto the container or place a piece of tape onto the outside when it is dry. When collecting samples, it is important to include information about the location, time, and any other notes that are important for later analysis, including what you're collecting. Voila! You are now ready to wade into the ocean and collect plankton. Make sure not to let your plankton toe drag along the bottom, otherwise you will just collect sand. Make sure the cap is securely fastened on the bottle. Then hold your plankton toe by the strings at the open end and wade through the water. The plankton will get caught on the nylon stocking. Before you exit the water, squeeze down the nylon stocking into the bottom part of the plankton toe so that the plankton collect in the closed portion. When you exit the water, make sure you have your collection jar ready. Uncap the bottom of the toe and let the plankton filled water enter your jar. You are now ready for the third part of this unit where you are going to analyze what you collected. If you have to wait before getting to examine the plankton that you collected, be sure to keep your collection jars at 4 degrees Celsius. Basically that means just put them in the fridge. Thank you for watching Plankton in Our Oceans, Collecting Plankton. I look forward to seeing you for the third part of this unit when we are going to go over how to use a microscope to look at your samples.